All right, welcome back to our playthrough of Final Fantasy VI. We are now into part five, and where we last left off, we had completed two of the three scenarios here. We're going to pick up with the final one, which is with Sabin. If you recall, way back on the late river when we took out Ultros, he dove in after him and found himself floating up the river. And now that we've taken control of him, here we are. We notice he is all by himself out in the lone open. First thing we're going to do is switch him back to the front. No need to keep him in the back anymore. Although, keep in mind, he is by himself, so sometimes it may not be a bad idea to play defensively. Now, we do have a random item shop here. The first thing I'm going to do is buy myself a pair of sprint shoes, because, again, the people who did have them are no longer with us. You got plenty of money. Don't worry. It doesn't hurt to have a few of them. Also, I'm going to buy a few of those shuriken throwing stars, because there's a chance you might run into shadow at some point. Hint, hint, you will. So make sure you got probably, I don't know, a good supply of those. You will need them for this next section coming up. Can't hurt to have a couple of tents, so just basically load yourself up here. Buy some of those edges also. Oh, look, there's Shadow right there. <laughs> See, knew what I was talking about. All right, so basically you're going to convince Shadow to join you. It's not that hard. He's going to join up the fight, so boom, just like that. It's no longer a solo flight all the way back to Narsh. We're going to be taking control of Sabin and Shadow, at least for the time being. And we're going to give Shadow a couple things here. Give him a little bit of gear, the outdated stuff you don't need anymore. We're going to equip Sabin with the Sprint Shoes. We're going to give him all of the major relics, the ones that actually matter here. Because keep in mind that Shadow is a mercenary, and he will come and go as he pleases. And you don't really know when that's going to happen all the time. So don't give him anything you wouldn't mind, or you would mind losing later on in the game. So give him the simple stuff. Now here we run into a house with a very weird, odd-looking man, odd-talking man. I'm talking about a weird child that uh, was here a long time ago, and now he's like a... I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> it's not here anymore. And we're just going to leave this house and walk out onto the plain field here. We're walking along, and we'll see what we come across. Where are we really headed? Don't really know. But we're just walking along and fighting whatever comes our way. So at this point, we're running across a few pallet-swapped enemies. These are leafers, but a little bit tougher. But again, these are still pretty much one-shots. Any kind of <laughs> bunny rabbit you come across better be a one-shot. So we're going to suplex the hell out of them for a lot of damage and a lot of fun and a lot of laughs. And just like that, that takes care of those enemies. We're gonna keep on moving on through this territory here and we'll see what the game throws at us next. We're running into some forest lands here and yeah, some of these enemies get a little bit tougher. Stray cat's nothing to write home about. Now take note of what happened right there. So Shadow had a dog partially block an attack and that's kind of interesting because Shadow has a counter attack that he uses with his dog named Interceptor, and aptly named because you will see he intercepts the attack and counters it. Uh, these beaker enemies can be pretty annoying. They can take a bit of punishment before they go down. But again, nothing we really can't handle here. We're just going to keep on moving through the territory. We're moving on south, very far south, as a matter of fact, until eventually we come to this little desert. But before we get there, we got one final battle with these annoying pallet swap bunnies. We're going to take them out really quick. Of course, it helps when you put the input in correctly. But again, nothing we can't handle. We're just going to keep on moving along, take out these bunny rabbits, and then the story is going to pick up in this desert encampment here. And what are we going to run across? Well, it's going to be very much story driven here, and let's see what we got right in here. Run into the desert, and we see it is an imperial camp of some sort. A little bit of a story here, a lot of imperial soldiers. So, what's going to happen here? Have we heard? Aha, so Kefka's hanging out here. So what's going to happen at this point? General Leo. So General Leo is actually one of the characters that we saw way back in the flashback cutscene when Terra was revealed to have that slave crown on her. And that will make a whole lot of sense once he comes into focus in just a little bit because he is here at this camp. So here's Kefka throwing his weight around. He gets around quite a bit, huh? And he's got a little plan up his sleeve. He's going to do something quite awful, but what is it? We're going to learn pretty soon. So basically, the way these soldiers are talking, General Leo is a very, very good general, very good leader, and Kefka is obviously quite the opposite. So interesting story dialogue going on here. Uh, here comes a commander saying that the, these soldiers are going to storm Doma Castle, a place we haven't learned anything about yet. Speaking of which, here's Doma Castle right here. So what's this all about? So basically the commander and all of his troops are storming the castle and we're going to see what exactly are they doing. They're just waging an all-out war and assault. 
we're going to see what happens in here. Who is in Doma Castle? What is Doma Castle? So we have a bunch of sentries in here. It looks like they're doomed and they're conceding their defeat. Then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, a moment, sir. What's this? Oh, here's a random character we've never met before. Allow me the honor. Well, who is this? Faithful retainer to his family's liege. Who is it? Well, that would be another one of the most powerful characters in this game named Cyan. Cyan. Color of blue. Aptly named. He also wears the color blue a lot in this game. So as I said, Cyan is a very, very physically gifted, powerful fighter. He's probably right up there with Sabin in terms of physical strength. The major difference being that he likes to use swords, whereas Sabin likes to use his bare fists. So you will see his range of attacks are very interesting and very powerful with the sword. Wait till you see the kind of weaponry he has available to him. I am your worst nightmare. He spares no expense. He doesn't twist any words. He just comes right at you here. Decent bit of health for this early in the game, although that's relative to where your current levels are with other characters. So the neat thing with Cyan, his unique skill is the sword, right? And look specifically what it is here. He basically has sword tech, as they call it, and there's eight different levels of it. The higher you get in level, the further you get in the game, the more different sword tech levels you earn, and obviously there are different effects with those. So we took down the commander pretty easily, and we earned a black belt relic. Wait till you see what the black belt does. It's actually a very effective relic that can be used with any character, but very useful with a strong character like Cyan. So, we take him down, not too much of a problem here, and as I was saying, those sword techs, they get very powerful as you move throughout the game. Some of them are physical attack based, some of them are magic based when you get later in the game. Now check out this treasure chest here, you have a couple options to hit it, kick it, leave it. Uh, you do want to open it obviously, but you want to do it in a manner where you don't alert anybody to your presence here. So take note of the option we just picked, if you pick the other option to kick it, you will actually have the dogs right outside of that tent come barge in after you and then you will have an inescapable fight that you have to go after and worry about. Here just hitting it allows you to open it with no problem. You get the star pendant which will allow you to protect against the poison effect. Very useful at certain points in the game, particularly when they start casting more powerful forms of poison. Nothing really in this tent, nothing you have to worry about so just walk past, don't get into fights with guards unnecessarily. And here, this is General Leo, the guy we've seen way back in that early cutscene here. So General Leo basically through the dialogue reveals himself to be a very good general, even though he is part of the Empire here. He's kind of the guy you'd want to work for, he's a good boss to have, right? So he basically says, he agrees, it's more important to not throw down your lives, throw them away for nothing, be careful, go back to your family, you know, plan for later days in life. So pretty good guy to work for, I'd say. Now, here we go, Pigeon from Gestal, who is the emperor of this whole ridiculous empire. And he gets sent on back home. He's going back to the emperor. And second in command, obviously, you would think would be Kefka, right? Well, that leaves him in charge, so what in the world's gonna happen once General Leo takes off and goes back home? Well, we're about to find out here. Moves on down, still can't get by. There's Kefka way down in the south. Aha, he's going to turn the river into poison. Who exactly is he going to poison? Could it be the inhabitants of the Doma Castle? That would be the most obvious bet, I would think. Yep, Leo is showing himself to be very, very much a good leader. Even though there are obvious tasks that he has to do, he cares about the innocent people along the way. Kefka clearly does not. We're going to see exactly what happens here in just a few moments. So Kefka's going to head on up north here, have a little conversation. Poison. Well, that's obviously never a good thing when you're talking about poison. So it sounds like they're, yep, going to wipe out the entirety of Doma Castle. And here we got a confrontation with Kefka here. Our first one where we'll actually head into battle. All right, so this fight is not much of a fight at all. In fact, it's not even a fight, period. All you got to do is land one single hit on him and Kefka will run away from you. It is possible that he could hit you and even outright kill you if you decide to do nothing, but clearly no one is going to do that, so that's not the point of this fight. Get one single hit, runs away, just keep on chasing him. And you will end up having to get a second fight against him before anything meaningful can happen. Really nothing up there, so here comes fight number two. 
This fight is more of the same. Just get one single hit and he will once again run away from you. Youch! Yeah. Bit of a wuss, I'd say. One single hit and he runs away. So we're going to continue on, continuing to chase after him. Now before you go after him all the way, we're going to take a little detour up this hill here into this tent. Take note, you got two chests here, one to the left, one to the right. We're going to open them both. One of them is going to have a rather difficult boss fight, but it also contains a very useful item if you win that fight. So the one to the right gives you the Mithril Glove, which is a nice relic for the time. It actually uh, auto-equips safe when your HP gets low, which basically prevents magic attacks, or rather halves the damage in a magic attack. So pretty useful when you get later in the game, and magic is pretty powerful. Now here we have a monster in a box, and this Telstar robotic enemy here deals pretty massive damage. So you want to make sure that you go all out on the attack, and that's kind of unfortunate when you get missed blitz inputs. It makes it much more difficult, obviously. This guy has a very powerful tech laser, which can downright one-shot you if you aren't fully leveled here. Make sure you got plenty of those Shuriken Ninja Stars so Shadow can toss them. And man, we're having really bad luck with control today. Continue to use all of the Shuriken that you have. Blitzes, hopefully they work. Now here's the demonstration of the safe in effect here. So you see we got low on health and the safe kicked in. It's not going to have much of an effect in this battle because it's not using magic attacks on us. And oop, this is bad. Alarm's ringing. That means he calls in two separate grunts that you got to worry about taking down. And those grunts could basically kill you at this point because you're in critical one-shot territory right now. And in fact, I think they will actually take out Shadow if we're not careful here. And finally, we get the Blitz Aura Bolt to go off there. And I tell you, my controller is just not doing what I want it to do right now. So we do end up taking that one down. And man, just the damage over time took down Shadow. We're going to have to call in the Phoenix down here if we want any shot of win in this fight. Especially if our controller and the Aura Bolt blitz doesn't function the way we want it. We'll have to use a different blitz or just use regular attacks. So we're going to go ahead and call him back with the Phoenix down and luckily Shadow has Interceptor blocked two of those attacks and we're going to have an automatic counter with the Wild Fang take him down. Look at that, nearly a thousand damage which for this point in the game, especially with a counter, is ridiculous. Four digit damage is great for this point in the game. We got the Green Beret, which is a nice helmet to equip, and I believe Saban already has it equipped. Ooh, I guess not. So we're going to go ahead and put it on him, and notice how it increases defense, evade, and magic defense, so it's a very, very nice defensive piece of armament to have for this early in the game. So it's definitely worth the risk of taking on a tough enemy here. So we get the victory. Obviously, make sure that you continue to heal your opponents, or <laughs> heal your opponents, to heal your teammates, so you're not caught off guard on these next... A few attacks here. Now this one is a little bit difficult. You're not going to have a one-hit runaway deal. So you got two soldiers in the front, take them out quick, and then you got these Templars in the back, which have much considerably stronger attacks with those axes here. So you want to work on taking them down quickly. Hopefully, if you're doing any kind of blitzes, they actually work. In this case, I've given up on the Aura Bolt because my controller just sucks right now, and I'm just using the Suplex. The damage isn't quite as high but it is going to still, uh, still deal significant damage here. So we're going to go ahead and hopefully take down one of these Templars, and whoop, that's never a good sign. Saban goes down. Now, thankfully, we it did end up getting the victory here. We're going to have to worry about reviving Saban before the next major battle comes. Now, here we get to a cutscene. This is not good when you read the text and see what he's about to do. And we see the waters changing color, and that can only mean that he has just poisoned the waters. Well, we know what the intent was, so let's see if that plan actually pulled through. We're now cutting to Doma Castle. And we see that something pretty interesting is happening over at the base. Of course, we already know what's happening at the base. We're coming from there. The water looks odd. Gee, I wonder why. What just happened here? Whoop, that ain't a good thing. Fall into your death. They just keel over and give up. And clearly this poison had its effect. This is not a good sign right now. This is poison. Why, yes it is. You're such a genius. Low down, contemptible. Uh-oh, that must mean the king's in trouble. Something tells me it's a little bit too late, but let's go find out. 
Cyan goes down the steps. To the king! Oh, is that all it takes to get sprint shoes auto-equipped? <laughs> I wish it was that easy. And, uh-oh, looks like the king is down and out for the count, or will soon be out for the count. Yep, it looks pretty much like this king is just about on the way out the door. And his family's in danger here. Well, if his family's actually in the castle, one can only assume that the worst has just about happened here to not only all of the sentries, but possibly his family as well. Not a good situation here right now, obviously. Yep, the king has obviously passed away. And now at this point, you would think that Cyan is out for vengeance to see who did it, why they did it, and things like that. But we're going to walk around the castle for a few moments here before we continue on with the story. There are a couple things that we can do. There's actually a few items that we can find before we continue on here. And we'll show you a couple things here. So if you head down here to the far right, there are some chests and there are obviously some dead sentries as well. So no point really looking at that. Now there is a remedy in the pot, and in case you aren't familiar with the remedy by this point, it will basically cure any status ailment whatsoever. It is a absolutely wonderful item to have. So that's definitely worth getting. Going in here, it looks like the game freezes for a moment, but nope, he's basically looking around and nothing of interest or use to find in there. Basically a lot of dead bodies. And that's all he found. So we got one remedy, and we're just gonna go back in here before we forget where we're at. And we're going to head over to the right, which is where his family's room is. Now, you will notice a treasure chest here. Unfortunately, there is no way to open it at this time. You have to come back later in the game when you have access to come here and you can get the chest. So we'll worry about that later. Uh, that is his wife, Elaine. And it looks like, unfortunately, we cannot do anything. That is his son, Owain, I guess. And it looks like they've both been poisoned and killed, unfortunately, which is really sad for a Nintendo game this early on. Uh, so clearly he is enraged, and he, now he's going to go out and try to fight the Empire all by himself, all Commando style. And now he's referred to as the Warrior. Forget Cyan. And he's going at it all by himself. And oh, look at this. There's Saban and Shadow. Think they're going to help? Oh, of course they are. We're going to jump in, and now we have control. Interesting fight series here. So we have... <laughs> looks like we forgot to revive Saban, right? So we better take care of that pretty quickly. So we got Shadow fighting, and we have Cyan out there by himself. We have no control over Cyan right now. Although we could throw healing items at him if we really wanted to. So obviously, we're going to try to revive Saban quickly. So once we get control of this, and we remember what we're doing here, we're going to go throw a Phoenix down onto Saban here. That's exactly what we got. Thankfully, we have a whole bunch. So we'll go ahead and utilize one right there and a potion to get him back up to this near normal. All right, now we're going to try this again. We're going to have a full party here, but once again, we still don't have control of Cyan. He's out there by himself as a loner. We will have control of him soon enough, though. And we take out the grunts very easily. They are all one-shots at this point. No need to worry about any kind of blitzes or ninja stars. Very simple fights here. Cyan is still out fighting by himself, and we're going to continue to provide him with support. And here we go. It looks like, is Cyan finally ready to join us? Nope, he's still out there. Except now we have a cadet we have to worry about with the large axe attack. So we'll take out the two grunts very easily. Might be useful to throw out a blitz or two right here. Obviously, he can take a few shots. So we'll get rid of this grunt, and a few more attacks should take him down fairly easily. Yeah, not a whole lot to worry about. That axe is really nothing too special. All right, finally... Looks like Cyan is ready to fight with us. So, clearly we know this is not a place we want to stick around. We don't want to be in this Imperial encampment. So it looks like we're going to finally join forces, and we're going to get the heck out of here. And we got a few mechs here, mech warriors, Magitech armor. So we're going to, whoop, we're going to jump right into them. And I think we're going to escape the Imperial encampment right now. So we jump on in figuring out how to use these things, and you can see Cyan is not that much of a machinist. Not much for technology either, and <laughs> this has always been a funny sequence here. Taking out the enemy by accident. And we're just going to keep on moving on. And once again, we have control of Imperial Magitech armor for the first time since the very beginning of the game. Now, the only difference here compared to the first time 
as you'll see with all three of these characters, is they all have the same basic attacks, fire, ice, and bolt beam, and a heal force beam, so that's very useful for when you get low on health. The only downside is that none of them have the Magitek missile, the x fur to send people to the X-Zone, so we don't really have any of Terra's previous attacks from way back in the beginning, but you don't really need them for this early on. Any of the attacks will do just fine, so if you find a character getting low on health, which it looks like Shadow is a little bit, go ahead and use the heal force. It will actually almost overheal them, honestly. Uh, 700 HP worth of healing, so obviously you don't need quite that much. We're going to go ahead and get back to full health and then take these guys down very quickly. I believe we have one or two more battles against Imperial Grunts here before we actually get out of this encampment and we can continue on forward. So we'll take out the very last one here. We'll move on to our very last battle after a measly, meaningless counter-attack. And it's always nice to get some potions. Very useful right now. Tonics are becoming pretty much useless as we get a little bit higher with HP totals. Those potions only need about one to get to where we need to be. And these Magitek armors are really not that tough. Any kind of fire bolt or ice beam will take them out with one shot, so nothing to really worry about. Go ahead and use the heal force to get Saban back up to full health. And we are going to take out the very last one right here. After we do a little bit of healing, and then we should be all set to go right about here. One final attack. And then we are just about ready, I believe, to get out of this Imperial encampment. Yep, that's just going to do it. So basically, they're trying to figure out how to get to Narsh right now. Now, you consider how quick and easy the last two scenarios we did were. Will this one be just the same? Will we go straight to Narsh? Well, that'll be no. We're going to continue on south, and we've still got quite a ways to go, believe it or not, before we get to Narsh. So we have only gotten through the first part of this scenario, getting out of that Imperial encampment. And we have now reached the next major critical checkpoint, which is the Phantom Forest. The Phantom Forest is a very fun, very memorable, and somewhat tough section of this early part of the game if you are not prepared for it. And unfortunately, if you don't put those Blitz inputs in correctly, it can cause you a bit of hardship, especially once we get to where we're going in the Phantom Forest. Wait till you see where we're going here. So we're just going to navigate through this very interesting twisting maze-like section of the forest. Here's another nice medicinal recovery spring. We also had one of those back in one of the caves near South Figaro. Those are very handy. We're gonna take out a few more of these single ghosts here and the ghosts have the ability to cast fire and it does somewhat decent damage here. So take them seriously. Thankfully, you only fight one of them as opposed to multiple ghosts. That could be a little bit more problematic if we did. And I believe this is the last section. Nope, we got one more before we get to the final destination of the Phantom Forest. We've got one, ooh, oh, speaking of uh, multiple ghosts, we got a few right here. So we're just gonna take them out as quick as we can. Get to experiment with different blitzes, throwing techniques, sword tech techniques. Most of these guys tend to be one shots anyway, so nothing too complicated. Go ahead and burn through the last one, and I think we're gonna finally get to the final destination here. And let's see what we got. We're just about where we need to go right now. Should be coming up right over here. Oh, looks like we got one more battle to deal with. We got, ooh, this is actually one of the more, not difficult, but more populated army encampments here, I guess you could say. So the ghosts, obviously, we're kind of used to at this point. And uh, I always like getting the shadow counterattack takedowns here. They're very, very strong when they hit. I don't believe they can hit enemies in the sky, which is why we missed it there. So we're just going to take down the last of these. Nothing too complicated, nothing we haven't seen. In fact, that uh, Poplium is nothing more than a color palette swap of the Vaporite that we saw very, very early on in the game in the Narsh Cave. So nothing to really worry about or write home about there. And that should just about do it. I believe that we are finally ready to move into the final section here. And here we are. We have arrived at the Phantom Train Zone. A train's there. We're thinking survivors are inside. Could it be Elaine and Owen? I highly doubt it, considering we saw their dead bodies there. But what do we know, right? We just got here. We're going to go on board. We're going to see what's in here.
I'm going to follow him in. Looks like a regular train cabin to me. I don't see anything suspicious here at all. No clue what's going on. Trying to escape? Well, let's see. Well, looks like we better get off now. And, of course, too slow, too late. We are locked onto the train now. It is the Phantom Train. Well, we are not ready to die just yet, I don't think. So, since we can't get off, we're going to do a little bit of exploring. Now, you could go back that way. Not really worth it, though. We're just going to plunge straight ahead and try to get this over and done with. So this section here, the Phantom Train, does have some pretty difficult fights. So you do need to push onward and upward and forward as quick as you possibly can in order to continue on with this uh, and sustain minimal damage. Now, I always found this part funny here. There was a ghost offering items, right? So if you need to, buy more Ninja Stars and Shurikens if you need to. Also, a good opportunity to buy another Phoenix down or two, maybe a couple potions. Never hurts to have a few of those. Antidotes are kind of nice to have. Eventually, there will be a boss fight coming up where it might be really nice. Maybe a couple you know, green cherries for imps. I think we're pretty good on items here, so I'm not too concerned. But again, buy them if you feel like you need them. we got plenty of GP at this point in the game. we got a few more ghosts. We have the option to fight. This one was kind of in the way. We had no choice. Now, something that's very interesting with these ghosts, one of them is actually friendly, and you have the option to have it join you. And it's kind of cool because although the ghost is very weak, the ghost attack that it does have will basically outright insta-kill the enemies that you go up against. Now here we go up against an enemy called the Whisper. And the Whisper is kind of interesting. It hits for decent damage, but it also auto-damages itself over time, which I always found kind of interesting. But you do got to take them seriously. They will show up in bunches from time to time, so take them down quickly. And basically, we're just going to move on and continue on through this phantom train. And it looks like, oh, here's the friendly ghost. So, yes, we will take it along. And maybe we'll actually get to see this ghost attack in action here. I'm sure we will. We're going to move into this train. Just got more ghosts here. And that ghost is blocking our exit. So we're going to have to fight our way through here. As I said, we have the ghost in our possession here. Now, he has an alternate attack of possess. And actually, I would just considered using the possess attack automatically because his base attack is pretty puny and pathetic so the possess attack again will auto kill anything that he uses it against with the exception of bosses so and we move on here and it looks like we are trapped on this train car by a whole bunch of ghosts so what do we do jump off the train we're thinking about it but clearly obviously we're not going to suicide so we're just going to move around for a little bit and it looks like we're in pretty deep crap right now So what do we do at this point? We are stuck on a train roof car. Not quite sure what to do. And we got one more battle up here we got to deal with. Unfortunately, ooh, this is a nasty one. We got back attacked by four whispers. See, this is what I was talking about. They auto damage themselves over time, and I really don't understand the point of it. But we're not going to take these guys lightly. We're going to take them out quickly. And there goes one. Man, that's a lot of damage with the Aura Bolt. And uh, that's because the Aura Bolt is a light, holy lightning attack, basically. And obviously a Whisper is dark. That's a big reason why it deals so much damage there. These guys aren't too tough now that we are, as I said, taking them seriously. So, boom. That is one of my favorite attacks early on. The Possess just outright kills them. You do it in a soft there. Alright, so basically we are just going to... What are we going to do? I don't know. We're stuck. Saban has an idea. This ought to be interesting. What, is he going to blitz every single ghost on the train? Yahoo! Jump over the cart. And the next one. That's never a good thing. Alright, so we're two carts ahead of the ghosts now. Those ghosts are still coming after us. Persistent, as Sign likes to say. Bloody persistent. All right, we're going to detach train cars so they can't come after us. Let's go ahead and do that. So we detach. Boom, there they go. Bye-bye, can't follow you now. All right, we're going to come back in. We're going to hit that switch again. Now, there is a save point here. If you feel like you need to use it, go ahead. It's also a good option to use a tent if you have no plans on saving. And that's exactly what we're going to do here, actually. We have a couple tents. Let's go ahead and use one. We've got three different tents. It doesn't hurt right now. Now remember, a tent is like a sleeping bag, except it affects all party members. It will refill all of your HP and all of your magic for all party members. 
Now obviously right now that's kind of pointless because there's only two party members in the whole game that can use magic, and that would be Terra and Celeste, and neither of them are in the party right now. Now that train we just went into has an option to basically refill your life and your magic, just like we did at the save point. So what we did was kind of pointless. We did waste the tent, uh, but again, I will say out loud, openly admit, uh, I did not realize that we were that far away from the cart, and I just went ahead and I played it safe. Uh, but yeah, if you wanted to, you could just sit down at that table, and basically the ghosts will come out like a chef, and they'll give you a whole bunch of ghost food that refills your life the exact same way. So do whatever you want. Obviously, the next time I play this game, I won't be wasting a tent like that. So we're going to continue on forward. And this is uh, the bomb. Okay. So the bomb, luckily we got a pincher, pincer attack here. Now bombs can be very difficult and very nasty here. If you don't get them with one shot, eventually later in the game those bombs will explode just like you saw right there and they will deal significantly massive damage, sometimes outright killing the player that got the kill, or got the hit rather. Uh, voice here, what's going on? Siegfried. Trying to steal a treasure chest, huh? Kind of get the sense they're not taking this guy seriously. Well, let's see why. Three on one battle against Siegfried. Notice how his name is misspelled here and it was spelled differently in the text before. Interesting, right? Yeah, this guy's obviously a pushover. You can tell by the way he talks. <laughs> I always found this funny. Attack Shadow, he just gets killed by the counter attack. That's a lot of damage this early in the game. Nearly a thousand damage just on a counter. You can tell what a pushover. And of course, we just get one GP for the uh, for the trouble, right? Yeah. What a bag of win. Yeah, I think that uh, tells you everything you need to know. He still gets the treasure. Now, what exactly was in that box? Well, we're not going to find out just yet. Will we ever find out? We'll find out later. Or will we? All right, nothing in this room. We're just going to keep on moving on. Now, you could talk to some more of those ghosts. Some of them will offer to join you. Some of them will offer to outright fight you. It's not worth it. You don't need them. Just keep on moving through. All right, we're going to take out the bomb. Nothing too difficult or too nasty here. Just keep on moving on. And we got a few more of these rooms and cars here. Nothing in this one. And the impresario talks about how to stop the train. We are actually getting very close to the front of the train and the engine here, and we will be getting the option to stop the train pretty soon. Now this Whisper is using an attack called Demi, and Demi is an attack that is very annoying and dangerous. It will not outright kill the character that it hits, but it will half any HP that the character has. So basically, if you have 1,000 HP, you get hit with Demi, you lose 500 HP right off the top, which is really nasty. There's another attack similar to it called Quarter, which will take 75% of the player's health, which is even worse, obviously. Thankfully, we're not seeing any attacks like that just now. Sniper Sight, very nice relic. We'll talk about that in a moment. Monster in a Box. This is a very, very tough battle coming up here this early on. A Spectre, which is basically a palette swap to Whisper. Very, very similar, and has a lot more HP and deals nastier attacks. So we just dealt 570 attack damage there with the Aura Bolt and still didn't kill him. We had a Ninja Star, dealt pretty significant damage, Dispatch, so all three major attacks were dealt, and all three of them failed to kill him. So we're going to have to keep hitting really hard on this Spectre, really hope that we get a decent, uh, some decent loot here out of this thing. Man, we got lucky there, 180, had we not been healed, would have been bad. And we got a Hyper Wrist there. Hyper Wrist is going to increase your Vigor, which is a nice relic to have, kind of strength almost. And the other one that we picked up, as I mentioned, was Sniper Sight. So it ensures 100% hit rate. So basically what that means is if you ever get inflicted with a dark status ailment or if there's ever a chance that another, another character has a high dodge or evade rate and a chance of dodging your attack, uh, which there are some characters later in the game with a high dodge rate, uh, that relic is extremely useful to ensure that you hit the character and get the hits and the damage. All right, so in this room, it tells us how to stop the train. So we read over here on the left-hand wall. And it's going to be different every time you play the game, so you can't just rely on what you're seeing here. But in this case, you flip the first and third switches, go over here to the smokestack, and then push this. And it looks like we've stopped the train. Now, what do we do now? Phantom train, slowing my progress. Why, yes, we have. Ooh, he's going to fight us. One of my favorite fights in the whole game, the Phantom Train. 
Now, check this out. Uh, the Phantom Train can be very difficult if you play him straight up. He's got a number of nasty status ailment inflicting things there. But he is weak to one thing, the Phoenix Down. Check this out. One Phoenix Down on the train. Boom. Dead. Now you may ask, why did that outright kill him? Simple. He's an undead fiend. Anything undead in this game instantly dies to Phoenix Downs. Not to mention they are significantly hurt by things like potions, X-potions, tonics, etc. So, that is a very easy way to cheese that boss. Always remember that if you ever get to this fight. And it's very possible that you could lose that fight this early on. And even if you come prepared, those status ailments are nasty to deal with. Two of the three of them deal status ailments. One of them deals a lot of damage. So, have those ready to go. There is nothing cheesy or bad about having to resort to the Phoenix Town. Now... It's kind of unfortunate that we had to resort to that because one of my favorite aspects of the whole game, one of the most memorable moments, happens with that boss fight. And it has to do with Sabin's blitz attack, the suplex. So as you know, you can basically pick the opponent up in the air, drop them on their head, right? Well, with that boss fight, believe it or not, you actually have the ability to pick up the Phantom Train and drop it straight on its head. I know that makes absolutely no sense, but it is extremely funny if and when you're able to pull it off. Obviously, you're not going to kill the train outright like that, but... It is something cool to try if you don't find yourself in significant danger with status effects. But it is what it is. Uh, we didn't want to take a chance there, so we just resorted to the easy win. Now, ooh, look at that. Cyan's family is getting on the train. How is that possible? Weren't they dead? Well, maybe that's just their souls going to the afterlife. Interesting, interesting happenings going on here. Oh, boy. That train's taking off. Whoa! There goes Sabin. Uh, no, you're not getting back on. We just got off the train. Why would you want to... Well, never mind. Uh, you might want to move, move a little bit faster there, Cyan. Oh, we're going to forget all about you in just a few seconds. This is kind of a sad part in the game this early on. So we had to witness his family getting killed or witness their dead bodies and then watch them go to the afterlife. Kind of feel bad for the guy early on. But we're going to continue on. Shadow says leave him alone. We're going to try anyway. Not much luck. And we can't leave right now. So we're just kind of stuck on this platform podium here. Try talking to him again. No luck. So yeah, pretty sad scenario there. But we get out of the Phantom Zone, the Phantom Forest. And we got one last little fight here. <laughs> this could be pretty dangerous, right? Uh, make sure, if you have any status ailments, make sure that you don't forget to uninflict them and heal them. Uh, so this is a good opportunity to use remedies, or better yet, just use a tent and heal all those remedies. Don't, don't waste remedies if you don't have to, because they are hard to find, very far and few between. And even when you can find them in shops, they're very expensive. So use a tent if you need to, heal any status ailments. And for right now, we're actually going to call it good. We're going to go ahead and save where we're at, and we will pick up once again in part six of the Final Fantasy VI playthrough when we continue on with this scenario. Thanks for watching.